Welcome, everybody. Happy birthday, Static Web App. Welcome, Rashmi. How are you? I'm doing great, Frank. How are you doing? <laughs> I'm doing fantastic. So happy to be part of this anniversary. I was looking forward, and Anthony is a, a, a ray of sun in my day. It's awesome. So funny. Tell me about it. I mean, it's it's 10:30 over here in India, 10:30 p.m. But I'm still there. Like super energetic. Thanks to Anthony's beautiful birthday wish. <laughs> we but have yeah, a lot this, of of people today coming up. Totally, right? I am so excited for the panel and the sessions that are coming up. But over to you, Frank. Why don't you start over here? Tell us about what Static Web Apps meant to you and who is our next speaker. Well, I'm I'm a fan of Static Web App. I play a little bit with it. Now my projects are in, in between two stages, so we won't talk too much about them. But uh, just my fault, I need to upgrade stuff. But, you know, let's make place for the next speaker because he pro auto-proclaimed himself the most okiest, okiest programmer in the world. Let's bring Scott Ensenman to kick off this anniversary. Hey friends, how are you? Hello, I appreciate Scott. that. Frank, recognizing my my okayness. Okayness, thank you. <laughs> There's a lot of developers out there that say that they're 10x developers, but I'm not. But I feel like with the with the help of Clippy and static web apps, I can be a, a fully okay programmer. I love we that. We totally support that. <laughs> and also yeah. emoji buddies. I love that. Yeah, emojis, absolutely. Tacos and uh, you have a is that a monkey? It's a slot. <laughs> a slot. All right. So Scott, oh, what do you? You have yeah. you have plenty of uh, of things to show us. I think. Am I right? Well, I, I, the, here's the thing. I appreciate you inviting me to talk about uh, static web apps. Uh, I am not an expert. I am a user of static web apps, uh, but I do feel very comfortable in Azure. And I basically want to talk about how I went from spending too much money on Azure with too much complication to finding a balance between the right number of app services, the right number of static web apps, and the right number of Azure functions. And I learned a lot about Azure in the process, and I have static web apps to thank for that. Wonderful. So today you want to share about that journey or like what what's your what you want to share? I thought it was like some some example. Yeah, I heard so, so many got, things. I don't know what what I should. Well, we're going to go ahead and we're going to share my screen. <laughs> and what we're going to do is uh, I'll kind of run through Hanselman International. So I'll go ahead and start if that's okay. Love that. Yeah, of course. Okay. Go. Okay. So my name is Scott Hanselman. Of course, I have this website called Hanselman.com. But as with all people on the internet that are uh, somewhat technical, I have a whole series of. Um, I would say domains that I have not done anything with. I have about 50 different domains. They're all different startups, different ideas. And some of them are projects that I'll never do, but other ones are uh, you know, front ends for simple websites or uh, games that I've made uh, for my kids. And I had, uh, had been using Azure for many, many years and had gone in and learned about app service plans. And I have a number of app service plans, uh, both on Linux and on Windows. And you'll note here also that I've got some basic plans and some premium plans. And I've got what, like 11 different uh, applications that are running right here. But uh, these are full on app service plans with a virtual machine behind them. Uh, and they were overkill for all of my different things. I have other projects, 12 or 13 other projects that um, deserve a home on the internet, but maybe don't require the cost outlay that uh, I was paying with um, with app service. So I started realizing that I was maybe using uh, app service plans when I should have been using Azure Static Web Apps. So when Static Web Apps came out, I started moving stuff and I started moving stuff quickly. And as soon as I got addicted to Static Web Apps, I started adding basically everything that I possibly could. If it doesn't need a full virtual machine behind it, Azure Static Web Apps is kind of the serverless of putting a page up on the internet. So for example, I've got a house that my family was selling. We were selling a house in Zimbabwe uh, and uh, I needed a website to go and put the house up for sale and then put a click to go onto WhatsApp. And it was a very basic little site that I wanted to put up. And my, my, my knee jerk reaction was, I'll go and spin up a new app service. But then I realized that this is really a pretty basic uh, basic web page with pictures of our house. So how can I do this simpler? 
Well, of course, with the static web app um, CLI, that static web app CLI allows me to go and initialize a page really, really quickly, initialize a site quickly, set up all the config that I need. It even lets me log in to Azure. So with this particular uh, application, let me switch over to my, um, my GitHub. Some of my sites are, uh, as you can see, are public, and some of them are private. Let's go and find that. I've gone and lost my section there. Hang on one second. Do, 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 do. Oh, well, do, 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 do. Actually, here's a funny thing. I'm trying to find the repository in GitHub, right? But you'll look over here. I can actually just go directly to the Azure portal and find that directly. So when I click on GitHub Action Runs, that's going to actually send me the, to the correct URL. I'll log in with the right, the right um, creds, and I'm here. So this is a private repository for the house that we were selling uh, in Zim. And you'll notice I just have a nice, simple HTML page and a styles.css. And then the static web apps automatically has that workflows file there, and it's put into a dot file, a dot GitHub. And that dot GitHub, you can look at it if you want to. You can see that Azure Static Web Apps gave it a fun name, and it's just a YAML. But you, you, know, you don't need to know about this, but it's kind of cool to go and see that there's triggers here that say for GitHub Actions, if someone pushes to this repository or does a pull request, or closes something, then we're gonna go and build and deploy that. And this made the flow very simple. I was able to get a website up really, really quickly. And then now I can go down into my command line. Of course, I'm using oh my posh, and we'll hear from Jan a little bit, uh, a little bit later. I can open up Visual Studio Code really, really quickly. And I could go in and I could update the, the money that we're gonna spend. I could say, well, it's a four bedroom house or it's a it's in a different block or a different location. I've just made some changes. I'll come back out to the command line and I'll type in git status. Yeah, I've modified that HTML. Maybe I wanna see what this looks like now, but I'm not ready to go and put that into production. I'll say static web app start. It'll go and automatically start up an emulator. Now it's not gonna be perfect to the cloud environment, but it's gonna be darn close. And you notice that it says here, local host, 4280, and that's underlined automatically because I'm using Windows Terminal. And Windows Terminal plus static web apps is a really great experience for anybody, uh, whether they're early in career or a little bit long, farther along like me. And now I am running my static web app with those changes automatically here on localhost. So I'm able to take a look at that. Now the cool part that people don't realize, they think this is the basics. Oh, you showed me the basics of static web apps. If I wanted to, I could go and make environments. You see how I've got my production environment, but I could open a pull request, have a preview environment, maybe run it by the family and say, hey, I've made changes. Here's a temporary static web app that shows you um, one of the pull requests that we're putting up as a proposal to change this page. They'll okay it, and then we'll put that back into production. That level of, of, of configuration and sophistication, the, the DevOps enablement of static web apps is really, really, uh, uh, I think, missed out. This is a feature that people need to make sure that they take a look at. So now I just go and say Control C, and then I'll say Git Add, I'll say Git Commit, I'll say Git Push, go and we'll send that off into GitHub or wherever we want to send it off to. I'll switch back over into GitHub. Let's make sure that we're in our right environment here. We'll click on, there we go, look at that. 10 seconds ago, 10 seconds ago, we queued up that new change right there. I'm realizing also, this is a little tip for those of you who are remote presenting. You notice how I'm turning my head and I'm pointing over here. I'm realizing uh, as I've been chatting with you all that I should probably flip myself around. That'll probably freak some people out but I should maybe go and do something like this. So now I can point like that. Little details, it's all the little details. I like the little details in Azure Static Web Apps as well. Now, notice that this action is running right now. It says clean up. The build and deploy is happening now. I don't have to worry about this. And did you see this? You see this here? 
Remember that fun name that we saw, Purple Flower? It's the YAML file that's informing Azure Static Web Apps about what it needs to do to make things happen. I don't have to think about that. The Static Web Apps CLI took care of it for me. This is super important because if you want new people to get into to, to software and to get a, a website online fast, there's no quicker way to do it than something like Static Web Apps. I can go and teach my, my young sons how to put a website together just like one I made for my family here, we made a hamster blog. So my kids made a hamster blog inside of Visual Studio uh, code, and I wanted to have a nice, simple flow. Now, how would you do this in the past? In the past, 20 years ago, maybe you'd FTP an index.html file up. But in the past, you would not have a nice, SSL certificate, a nice clean vanity domain. You'd probably have index.html at the end right there. Of course, Azure Static Web Apps is taking care of all of that for us. And then all I need to teach my kids how to do is type SWA start, take a look at the, um, the page, and then maybe they'll go and just say git push, which they can actually do directly from Visual Studio's git workflow, which is really, really cool. So they've gone and set up their uh, their page about Ruben the hamster, which is really cool. Azure Static Web Apps, of course, makes it easy. So we can go look at my hamster blog. And I want to showcase the custom domains here. This is really significant. Again, you see that cute name, that initial generated name that gets made by Azure Static Web Apps. Uh, we saw Purple Flower. We saw Salmon Coast. But this here are my Apex domain, my top-level domain, and then my C name or my subdomain www. And those custom domains got validated. I proved to Azure that I own those domains. And I got an SSL certificate all set up. Didn't have to do anything. Just works great. If we go back up here, we can see that this is coming off of our GitHub source. There's our runs. And then, of course, that workflow is that YAML file that we saw before. I can edit that workflow if I want to. See that again every time it happens on any kind of a pull request or any action being closed, it'll go and build and deploy that job. I don't have to think about that stuff. Azure Static Web Apps is even hiding tokens and stuff in secret. So it's enabling me to do the right thing, even if I don't know what the right thing is. So I've gone and set up now, what do I got? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine different Azure Static Web Apps. Boom, boom, boom. Baby Smash, one of my favorite static web apps at babysmash.com. This is not for smashing babies. This is a game for babies. Uh, I made this game 16 years ago. My baby is driving now. And I had been running this on an app service and it had been costing me a couple of bucks every month and it was starting to bug me. And I'm thinking to myself, this kid is 16. He wants to learn how to drive a stick shift. Why am I paying every month for Baby Smash? Well, that's because people are downloading it every month. This is a great site I built a long time ago. I built it with static HTML. I built it with CSS that I'd gotten from, uh, that I bought from a designer, but I wanted that site to live forever. I wanted it to be secure. I wanted it to be trustable. I wanted it to be available. So I moved it from a razor page site that was running an app service over to Azure Static Web Apps. Super easy to go. You can see that people are hitting it all the time. I wouldn't say it's the most popular application in the world, but I would say that there's several thousand downloads every month of Baby Smash. So I want to make sure that it's available. The best option was, in this case, uh, static web apps, which made life a lot easier for me. And I don't have to really think about it anymore. So if I click on hosting plan, I know that I'm supposed to tell you to spend lots of money and uh, you should go and throw money at Azure. But these are hobby projects. These are personal projects. So this is all free. 100 gigs per subscription. I've never once on any of these sites, even as popular as they are, hit any bandwidth uh, issues at all. Um, not a problem. There's really no issue for bandwidth because bandwidth overages are free on hobby project sites. I got two custom domains per app, which works out great. That's my Apex domain and my www. SSL certificates are free. Honestly, it's not until you start getting into the pro features like custom auth, uh, maybe having a giant app or lots of staging, things like that, or bringing your own functions that it comes down to just a couple bucks a month. But for all of my nine Azure Static Web Apps, everything has worked out great, even with things like Azure Functions. If we go to a more sophisticated page, like something like Azure Friday, 
Azure Friday is a show that I do. I've done 700 episodes of Azure Friday with my partners, Donovan and Lara. And we interview people all over the place talking about features like Azure Static Web Apps. And if I type static, you see how I started typing and it automatically brought up uh, Simona here. So here's Simona and here's Anthony talking about static web apps on the Azure Friday website with an Azure function in the back end. Pennies, pennies to do this kind of work. There's only 700 records, but it works out really, really nicely. It's a good looking site. And again, running in Azure Static Web Apps, which makes me happy. Um, I could gush and gush and go on and on and on about this stuff, uh, including how great the docs are, because I was actually uh, you know, updating my Azure Static Web Apps CLI to version 101, which you can go out and check out yourself if you'd like to. It's just a great little NPM global tool. You go and start that emulator, as I said before, with SWA start, just like I did here. Let's go back and find our hamster blog. We'll say SWA start, bring it up. Tells me where that static content is coming from right there on my hamster blog. It's on 4280, I click it. Oh, this is an interesting thing. So here's a fun bug actually. It's cool when you do a demo and a bug happens. Okay, so look right here. I brought up on 4280, which we had, and I'm in the my hamster blog folder, okay, but we got the previous house. We got that other static web app. Now this is actually my fault. This I believe is what's called HSTS caching. So we've got a situation here where either I've got some HSTS caching or possibly I've got a, um, a service worker that has gone and put this thing offline. So I can do a couple of things to, to prove that. I'm gonna right click and say empty cache and hard refresh. And that then cleared out that cache. Notice how when I hit F12 tools and I right click, I got new options up here, empty cache and hard refresh. Now, Donovan is gonna talk about this uh, when he shows how to do it in Azure DevOps, which is great. So I'm using GitHub Actions. We're gonna see a more extended demo from Donovan Brown as he talks about how this works in an Azure DevOps repository, which is gonna be really great. And he's gonna go even, uh, even, dip and even deeper. So. This works everywhere. You can do this stuff from, from anywhere. Uh, I just wanted to show you that little bug that I saw there where I had to go and ca empty my cache. And now my Azure Static Web App is working great. And we see Ruben just chilling right there on the hamster blog. All right, that is my time. I want to thank everyone for letting me open up the day. We've got a bunch of great demos and a bunch of great speakers coming up right now. So uh, thanks so much. Hey, Frank. Hey, that was an, an awesome demo. I'm happy to see that you know it runs, uh, de it, it's deployable from GitHub or Azure DevOps. Absolutely. And we know you a lot because of .NET, but Static Web Apps support plenty of different language, right? Whatever makes you happy, because it's this is all just getting back to the fundamentals of how the web is supposed to be. You can go and use vanilla JavaScript like we did on the hamsters. You can use Vue.js. You can use uh, any kind of tools like this, as well as different build tools like Gatsby and Jekyll and things like that as well. So you're going to be building out a site that's static. It could be I wrote it statically, or it could be I built it with a static web app tool. And there's a whole bunch of great ones out there. Yeah, indeed. Plenty of example. Thank and, you and I think so much for next, that. <laughs> yeah, looking forward to that. We'll show plenty of example. So thank you, Scott, for all your, your time. It was awesome.